Hi, welcome to this tutorial on how to use the new Panasonic Lumix camera that the Media Hub bought. My name's Jill Moore. I teach many of the photography classes here at Alverno, and I'm going to be taking you through a user's guide to the camera. We chose the Panasonic for a number of reasons. The Panasonic Lumix has a really great sturdy body, it's got easy controls, it's got a really good lens, and it's very portable. So it's a point shoot camera that anybody can use and take really good pictures. One of the things I like the most about the Panasonic is that underneath this shutter here, we've got really good glass in the lens. That's always a mark of the Panasonic Lumix camera. Um, a great feature of the Lumix is that it's got a really fine, fine 20 times zoom. So you can get a good clear shot close up or at a distance. So I didn't move. I was sitting on one of my couches and I took this shot and then I zoomed in and got this shot and you can see they're equally clear. So that's a great feature with this camera. It gives you a lot of options for shooting. This also has a great LCD screen. Right here, uh, you'll see there's a hinge here. You can pop the LCD screen up to give you a lot of different options in it. You can turn it around to get a really good selfie, which is always fun, but you can also angle it in many different ways to get good images. I have a slightly older version of this camera and I don't have that pop-up LCD screen. I really wish I did. Okay, this is the top of the camera. It's got a lot of options too. We've got the Wi-Fi button that I never use. Um, you're welcome to play with it. I don't really see any reason to use it because when you turn the Wi-Fi on, it means that the built-in GPS in the camera can uh, place every image. That means every image that you have has data in it that says where it was taken. That, to me, that just seems a little creepy. Um, On-off button here, this is the shutter. This, of course, um, zooms the lens in and out. And then this is your dial to go to the different modes. Uh, this Panasonic Lumix has several different modes that you can dial to. You see the little, little buttons right here. So you just whatever, this is on the creative one right now, but whatever you dial this to, you'll be in that mode. Uh, IA is your intelligent auto mode, and that's fully automatic. The camera makes all of the decisions, and they've really put a lot of technology into this. You know a digital camera is just a small computer, and it's, it's a very complicated computer, and Panasonic has done a wonderful job of creating the intelligent auto mode to give you the best possible images you can get without you making any of the changes. Now. I personally like to control the camera settings, so I use one of these modes. The program mode lets you control some of the settings. I don't use that very often at all, but the aperture priority and the shutter priority are modes that I use a lot, and then I'm mostly on the manual mode. We'll talk about aperture and shutter speed in a couple minutes. The creative modes are fun. They give you some built-in things, things that you might do with Instagram or things that you might do with Photoshop that are actually built into the camera. So that's sort of fun too. Panoramic gives you one of the longer shots. Uh, that's really good for landscape, for scenery, things like that. The scene mode gives you plenty of options. This is a way, again, to get creative in there. You can put this on the scene mode, SCN right here, and then on the back of the screen, on the LCD screen, you'll see lots of options. This is a touch screen camera, so that's really fun. So you can choose things like candlelight, sunset, night portraits, um, beach, all sorts of different scenes. Arts Effect is another creative thing that Panasonic has done. Uh, it's a little, little, I don't know, a little kitschy but fun. You can go in and try things like sepia tone or high saturation or something like that in there. Best way to get to know the camera is just to play with it. Okay, the control panel. This is where everything happens on the camera. This is exciting. In the control panel, you have several things things. You can hit this to go very quickly from taking still photos into your video mode. This, of course, is to play back the images that you've taken so you can see how they look. 
the exposure mode and the quick exposure, easy, easy adjustment, are things we're going to talk about more. This button right here is important. This is something that if you're taking one of my photography classes and I've told you I want you to set shutter speed and aperture, this is where you're going to go to do that, the exposure mode. Put it on manual and then go into your exposure mode. Um, the dial here is very much like the mouse on your computer and you can scroll up, down, left, and right by pushing the different um, these different spots on the camera. You can go do some um, real quick things. Go to quickly adjusting your flash, very quickly going to a macro mode if you're shooting close up. Um, hit this so you can do a self timer and so on. And then the display button and the menu button. Let me tell you something quick about the display button. If you're ever looking in the back of your camera, looking at the picture you've pictures you've taken or getting ready to take a picture and you're seeing all this all this stuff there all these words all these whoops all these words and numbers um, just hit the display button once or twice and that will go away that you can decide how much information you want the camera to display about each picture you're taking and then of course when you're in the playback mode you're looking at your video or looking at your image you can delete it by hitting this the quick menu when you're in the shooting mode will um, let you go to different settings, but when you're in the playback mode, this will let you delete. Okay, so here are real common settings here. I mentioned real quickly the flash mode. This controls the flash. So if I were to push this, um, I would get the screen right up here that shows me the different flash options. Automatic flash, which means the camera will detect whether it needs to use a flash. It's sort of a cool thing. Um, this is the flash with the red eye, so you'll get that one real quick flash before the main flash that reduces red eye. This means the flash is on no matter what. Uh, the camera doesn't detect it. You've decided you want the flash on, so there you go. It's going to be on. This is a slower flash, and then if you scroll down here, you get other options, and one of the options is simply to take the flash off. Let's say you're taking pictures in a church, and um, you really can't use your flash. You want to be able to take it off. As I mentioned, this is the whoops, come on there. This is the macro setting for shooting close-ups. This is the self timer. And this, the um, quick adjust on the exposure. When you're taking a picture, if you're looking in the back of the LCD screen here and the picture looks too dark, uh, you're in the shooting mode and you're trying to shoot something that looks dark, instead of going into the menu and adjusting a lot of different things, you can simply hit this button. You'll get a little ruler along the bottom. This side is light, this side is dark. So if you hit this side of the, of this button it will scroll up to the light side and you'll see the picture actually get lighter or scroll down to the dark to make the picture darker. Um, this is a very quick way to adjust the exposure on your camera. Okay now there are two ways to get to the different menus on the camera. Uh, I don't, I'm not quite sure why Panasonic did it this way but I'm sure they had their reasons. If you go to the menu set, you're going to have lots of options, and you can scroll down here. There are many more options. You can set your picture size, the quality, whether you're going with fine, super fine, etc. Your uh, ISO, which we'll talk about, your white balance, etc. So you scroll up and down again with the ring here, and then whichever one you're on, once like it, what, when you're on picture size, then you hit menu set again, and it will bring up your different options that you can scroll up and down on. You choose your picture size, you hit menu set. The quick menu is probably one you'll want to use more because it just gives you a much faster way to get to all of those. Okay, so I mentioned ISO. Whether you go to the menu button or the quick menu, you'll get one of these. So these go with the menu button, and these go with the quick menu. The ISO, uh, this camera has a wonderful ISO range. It goes from 80, may even go lower, may even go to 100. I, I mean, it, it, I'm not sure if 80 or 100 is the lowest, but it goes all the way up to 3200, which is a really high ISO. 
You'll want to set that according to how much available light you have when you're shooting. If you are shooting, again, in low light, let's take that same scenario. You're shooting in a church and you don't want to use your flash, you can't use your flash. You would want to take this ISO up to 800, maybe 1600. What that's telling the camera is that you want the camera to react faster to make an image out of the light that is available. Um, if you're setting shooting in really, really bright sunlight, go outside at noon and summer, there's so much sunlight, then you want a really low ISO. If you've ever had all of your pictures come out too light because maybe you were using the flash at a party and all the pictures are coming out really white, you probably had the ISO set too high. By setting the ISO lower, you're telling the camera don't react quite as quickly to the light and you'll get a better exposure there. Now the trade-off here with the ISO is that when you get up to these really high ISOs, 1600, 3200, you're going to get a lot of pixelization or grain in your picture. You're going to get that speckling effect, especially if you're shooting in low light um, with that really high ISO. So that's the trade-off. Okay, the next thing you can set is your white balance. Again, you can go into your menu button or your quick menu. So if you go into your menu button, you scroll down to white balance, hit the menu set, and then you'll get your different options here. Or if you go into your quick menu, you can just scroll up and down here. White balance is important because it determines what kind of light appears in your image. I'm looking out my window right now, and it's overcast and gray, and everything just looks gray. So if I had this set on sunshine right here, I would not get a good picture. I'm telling the camera there's plenty of sunshine, don't adjust anything. But if I set it to um, cloudy or overcast, what would happen is all of that gray would get warmed up a little bit with gold and yellow tones. If I set it to shade, or if I were shooting in the shade, I would get even more yellow and gold tones. So it would take away the coolness of the picture. Now I can scroll this up and down and get to other kinds of um, other kinds of white balance, including different kinds of light. Let's take a look here. If you're shooting under fluorescent light or tungsten light, uh, you can adjust it. I'm sure you've all taken pictures under fluorescent light, and then when you looked at them, everything looked sort of greenish. Uh, that's because you probably had the camera set for auto or for something else. So take a look at what kind of light you're under and try to set your white balance according to that. You can also set your burst mode. Again, we went to the quick menu mode, so we got this. We've got the uh, picture set at 16 megabytes, so that's really good. That's a nice big picture, 800 ISO, cloudy. I wouldn't worry about this right now. This is where your, where your focus is. This is center weighted. Usually when you're taking pictures, the thing that's in the center is what you want most in focus. Go ahead and go in here, scroll up and down, and play with some of the different focal areas. But probably you want it here. Now over to the burst mode. This is really fun because when you set the burst mode, you can determine how many times that shutter opens and closes. So this is set to 10 frames per second. That means in one second, 1001, if you have your camera set here, you push the shutter, 1001, your camera's going to take 10 quick pictures. You don't have to keep hitting the shutter. As long as you're holding it down, it's going to continue to shoot. Uh, this is great for sports. This is what I call the runway mode, but it really works very well for sports if you want to make sure that you're catching the action. Here you can turn it off, and you can set it to different, different strengths here. One of the things to remember in the burst mode, though, is that you can't use the flash when you're doing a lot of burst, because the flash takes a, about a second to recharge each time you set it off. Every time you um, take a picture with the flash, it takes a quick drain on the battery, so it needs to reset. Okay, so we talked about shutter priority a little bit. If we set the camera on shutter priority on the dial, we would get this on the back. And again, it's touch screen, so we could touch the S. Uh, we could also go into it through the menu. 
And what we'll get is on the back of the camera, we'll get the S and the word shutter priority. This tells us that that's what we're going to set on the camera. So why would you set the shutter priority? Well, you'd set the shutter priority if you wanted to take pictures with a really fast shutter. Let's say, again, you're taking sports, so you want a fast shutter. You put it on shutter priority, and then you're able to make your shutter speed faster or slower. When you've got it on shutter priority, what will happen is this will light up. This is your this this would mean this is your shutter speed, the up and down one. And the one that's an F is your aperture. So, so it tells us that we've got our camera set at a 32 ISO, and we're taking fairly small pictures, three megapixels. We've got our flash turned on, and we've got the um, the uh, shake reduction on. If we didn't want to see these again, we'd hit this display button and it would take a lot of this off. So on shutter priority, if you want a faster shutter, you toggle up and down here. Up will take it higher, down will take it lower. So right now we're at a shutter of one-fourth of a second. That's, that's a really slow shutter. That's very likely going to give you a blurred picture unless you're on a tripod. Here we've set the shutter at uh, 500 of a second. That's fast. You could probably get some pretty good sports pictures with that. Here, 1 2,000th of a second. That shutter is going to open and close so fast that you could catch a hummingbird's wings. You know, you can't see a hummingbird's wings with your bare eye because they move too fast. But if you were focused on where the hummingbird was and you were able to be in that burst mode and take a whole bunch of pictures with really high shutter, you'd be able to get some amazing pictures stopping that action. Okay, next we have the aperture or f-stop. Again, when we set it to aperture priority, that will show up on the screen. You can set it here or go into your menu. And just like the shutter speed, the aperture will change. And let me give you a really quick overview of what that means. The aperture is the hole in the lens of the camera. You probably thought that was a fixed hole, but no, that um, hole, you can adjust how wide open it is. It works just like the eyeball, just like the pupil of the eye. When it's dark out, your pupil gets bigger to let more light in. If it's really light, your pupil gets smaller. So this opening or aperture is... Um, it opens and closes according to how much light there is, and you get to set that. Now, why would you want to set that? Well, for one reason, let's go back to our church picture. You're trying to take a picture in the church. You've got a pretty high ISO, but you don't want to go with a really slow shutter speed because you don't want the picture to be blurry. Well, you'd go in and open the aperture up because the bigger the hole, the more light's going to come through, and the more you'll be able to get a well-exposed picture. The other thing with aperture is it controls the depth of field or how much is in focus in your picture. So if you're taking a picture of a single rose on a big rose bush and you want just that rose in focus, you go with really wide aperture, like aperture like 2.8, and the wide hole will give you that uh, shallow depth of field or that shallow focus so that your rows would be in focus but the farther away you get the leaves behind it and the rest of the bush would be out of focus. On the other hand if you're taking pictures oh I don't know let's say a railroad track and you're standing on the railroad track don't stand on the railroad track but standing next to the railroad track and you want to get one of those shots that's looking down the track and you want everything in focus then you get a really small hole. So the smaller the hole, the more is in focus from foreground to background. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go back to, and I'll show you. So again, when you're setting your aperture, when you've got an aperture priority, or if you're in manual, you can go back and forth here. Right here, this is um, your aperture. It's at 3.3 now. If we go back to that ring and toggle right, it will get smaller and smaller. Toggle left, it'll get bigger and bigger. So that's how you set the shutter speed and the aperture, by toggling up and down on this ring. Okay, so some real quickies here for you. This, again, this expo quick exposure button. 
This will do a blend of adjusting your aperture and your shutter speed. You're looking through the back of your camera, it's too light. You hit the quick exposure, hit this side to dial it down so it gets darker, and you take the picture of this side to dial it up. This, though, if you hit this exposure button, you'll be able to go in and adjust the aperture and the shutter speed independently, so you get to make the decision whether um, on, on this button, you don't know whether the camera's going to change your aperture or change your shutter speed to adjust the exposure. Here, you get to do it yourself. And again, you can see that's the back of the camera. There's your ISO, your f-stop, and your shutter speed. And you can get to that by hitting that exposure button. This is the biggest time saver you'll have in using this camera. Get into the habit of hitting that exposure button and adjusting those until you get the picture that you want. So that's your quick guide to the Panasonic Lumix camera. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it's helpful. I know there's a lot to learn about this camera. It is a very complicated, uh, finely tuned computer, and it's designed to give you simply wonderful images. Good luck. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to get in touch with me.